Welcome to this online lesson on the wives of Henry VIII. Yes, this is one of the most famous parts of all of English history, and the sort of thing that everyone's really expected to know about. So our aims are to know facts about each of the wives of Henry VIII, but also to explain and evaluate why Henry married so many times. Okay, so let's get cracking straight away and have a look at who we're dealing with here. Why did Henry have six wives? Henry wanted the following qualities in his wives. Loyalty. He wanted to be able to trust them. Perhaps something that, that we would appreciate today in a partner. He appreciated their beauty. Yes, he could be quite shallow at times. If they weren't beautiful enough, Henry just wasn't interested. He also wanted them to have the ability to have lots of children, especially a son. This might not be quite so shallow as it seems on the surface. As a king, Henry had a duty to secure his bloodline. And the most easy way of doing this was by having a son. Although in rare cases a woman could take over as, and become queen, uh, this was rare because, well, at this sexist time, boys were considered more important. But also, other kings around Europe didn't tend to respect queens as much as they respected other kings. Yes, like I've said, this is a very sexist time. He also appreciated their intelligence, though. As a Renaissance prince who was keen on sport, poetry and music, Henry wanted to be able to share these interests with his prospective partners. What you need to do now is just note down these qualities and then explain which quality you think was most important to Henry and why. Pause the video while you complete this. What did you choose? Well, Henry obsessed over having a son. There's a good reason for this. It's often forgotten that Henry was never meant to be king. He had an elder brother called Arthur, and Arthur died very unexpectedly just before Henry VII died. That meant that with very little notice and very little training, Henry VIII found himself becoming a teenage king much against his expectations. So Henry didn't want to put his heirs in the same position. He wanted to have at least one son to carry on his name, but preferably more than one, so that if the worst should happen, there would be someone else to carry on the Tudor name. Let's see how he got on. Here's a little rhyme you've probably heard before. Divorce beheaded and died, divorce beheaded survived. Well, what does that refer to? Well, it refers to the fate of all six of Henry's wives. So let's have a look at them in order of marriage. His first wife was Catherine of Aragon. She was divorced. Then Anne Boleyn. She was beheaded. And Jane Seymour. She died. Then Anne of Cleves. She was divorced. Although technically it never even got as far as the marriage being counted. Catherine Howard was also beheaded. And that leaves Catherine Parr to survive. Although not for long, only about a year longer than her husband Henry VIII. So divorced, beheaded and died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Helps us remember the order of the queens, but also what happened to them in the end. You may have heard it before. Notice how many Catherines there are. For the sake of clarity, I've given them all a slightly different spelling, although spelling was far from standardised at this time, so depending on which source you read, you might get a different spelling of Catherine. Your task for this slide then. Record the names of Henry's wives in order of marriage and record what happened to them. You might want to add a little illustration like I have. Then suggest reasons why Henry may have divorced or beheaded some of his wives. You can consider that an extension. Perhaps you already know some answers and this is a bit of revision. If not, you might be able to think about what we already know about Henry, what sort of king he was, and the reasons that he might become displeased with certain people. Pause the video while you complete this task. It'll probably take you between 5 and 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to have a look at each of these wives in more detail now. Your main task. You're going to create six top trumps cards, one for each of Henry's wives. You'll need to read the information on each wife, which can be found on subsequent screens, and then note down the key information. Here's what such a card might look like. This is a very basic one, and just so that you can read the information clearly, I've not written that much on it, but you'll be expected to produce quite a bit more detail than this. If you've never played Top Trumps before, it's like a trading card game where you can play cards and they've got different ratings for different features and you can compare them and whoever gets the highest ratings wins that particular card. So for example, if it was on aeroplanes, you might have the speed that it flies at, the height that it flies at, uh, the cost of it, things like that. With these wives though, we're going to have a look at the ratings that Henry might give them based upon his often quite superficial qualities that he looked for in a wife. 
So first of all, note down the name of the wife and which number she is, like I've done on this example here, Jane Seymour being wife number three. Add some detailed facts about each wife, her life, and her relationship with Henry, and then give the ratings. A rating for loyalty, could Henry trust her? A rating for beauty, did Henry fancy her? The number of daughters that Henry had with her, which might be zero. And the number of sons that Henry had with her, which might also be zero. Indeed, with some of his wives, he didn't have any children at all. And then give your own opinion, your overall rating for how much you think Henry loved her based upon all of these different ratings. Now, that will be partly based upon how important you think each of these different sections is. So if, for example, you count the, uh, the number of sons that he had with that particular queen really highly, that is likely to influence the overall rating quite a lot. On the other hand, if that wife turns out to be really disloyal, then Henry's not going to love her too much. So give it some thought. For each, the ratings should be one equaling not very much or not at all, and one should be completely. So if uh, Henry loves that wife one out of ten, then he doesn't love her at all. Probably no one's going to be quite that low. Equally, if the uh, rating is in the high numbers going up towards ten, then that means that they must have been one of Henry's favourites. On the subsequent screens, screens, we're going to have a look at each of the different wives and you'll have the opportunity to note down the key information that you need. You can create a series of templates of uh, Top Trump's cards, a bit like the one that you can see on the screen here if you wish, or you could do it more laid out just as notes. It's up to you. Wife number one, Catherine of Aragon. You can see I've included a template here. Perhaps you could screenshot this or just make your own. Born 16th of December, 1485. Married Henry on the 11th of June, 1509, and was divorced, or rather annulled, uh, that means that the wedding was said to have been not valid, in 1533. She died on the 17th of January, 1536. Catherine was born in Spain, and was first married to Henry's brother Arthur. should be pointed out that Catherine of Aragon was a very important Spanish princess, and so the marriage was politically very important for securing an alliance between England and Spain. After Catherine married Henry, she gave birth to Mary, who later became Queen Mary I, but only after many miscarriages, which was very tragic. The most important thing to Henry was that he had a son to take over the throne when he died. Catherine had produced no male children and was 42 years old when Henry fell in love with Anne Boleyn, who he found prettier by that point. It's worth saying that at this time, the sexist attitudes of the time blamed the woman for uh, the gender of the children that they had. This is all very ridiculous to modern beliefs, but that's how it was then. Henry asked the Pope, the head of the Roman Catholic Church, for a divorce. This was not allowed, and so Henry disobeyed the Pope to get rid of Catherine so he could marry someone else who would give him a son for the throne. In a future lesson, we're going to have a look at the break from Rome in more detail, but this is really where it comes from. So, pause the video now and create the first of your top trumps cards. And remember, you'll want to include a brief description of the wife and some interesting and specific details of who she was and what their relationship was like. So, give this a good 5-10 to 10 minutes. Pause the video now. So, that's wife number one. Let's see who's next. Wife two, Anne Boleyn. Born in 1501 and married Henry in January 1533. She was executed on the 19th of May 1536. Anne was English. Henry fell in love with Anne and got her pregnant in 1532 while still married to Catherine of Aragon. Nice husband, eh? The result was a baby girl, Elizabeth, who later became Queen Elizabeth I. Henry loved Anne very much and showered her with expensive gifts. There was much pressure on Anne to have a son too, but she did not. She suffered a miscarriage in 1536, possibly brought on by the stress of Henry almost being killed in a jousting accident. Henry wanted to get rid of Anne, so she accused her of adultery, which means being unfaithful, and plotting to murder Henry. More likely, he was actually paranoid from a brain injury from his, a uh, his accident. It's worth just pausing this briefly here uh, to, to go over this in a little bit more detail. In 1536, Henry was still very keen on jousting, but was not as young as he once was. People pleaded with him to stop this because it was so dangerous. So when Henry actually had his accident, he was in a coma for about two hours, and people thought he was very likely to die. Modern doctors now think that he likely suffered a brain injury, which changed his behaviour and his mood. And the wound that he got in his leg, he never actually recovered from. 
This meant that Henry could no longer exercise, and it's one of the reasons why his weight ballooned and he became increasingly angry and in pain and tyrannical and evil as his reign went on. I also feel like I'm doing Anne a bit of a disservice here. She's incredibly uh, important and really interesting. She grew up as a fiercely independent woman with her own religious beliefs, and we think that Anne's beliefs helped turn uh, Henry himself away from the Catholic Church, but there simply, simply isn't the time today to look at that in more detail. Sorry about that, Anne. So, con so to conclude then, those who are said to have helped Anne, and let's be honest, she probably was guilty of absolutely nothing at all, were hung, drawn and quartered, a traitor's death. Anne was also to be executed. She was allowed a private execution. She gave a speech praising Henry and was executed by a Frenchman's sword rather than the usual axe. Anne's head came off in one swoop. It should be recognised that the use of a French swordsman to behead Anne was actually seen as something of a, a nice thing to do. It was likely to be more reliable to kill her quickly and less painfully than if they had to use the axe. Some witnesses at the time said that Anne was beheaded so quickly that her mouth for a few seconds carried on mouthing the Lord's Prayer as it fell to the ground. Yuck. Anyway, pause the video here and make some of your own notes on Anne Boleyn. Again, between 5 and 10 minutes or maybe slightly longer for Anne will be enough to, to create your top trumps card. Pause the video now. It's hard not to feel sorry for Anne Boleyn. But then, I also feel pretty so sorry for Catherine of Aragon too. Wife number three, Jane Seymour. Born, circa 1509. Married Henry, 30th of May 1536. Died, 24th of October 1537. Jane was born in Wiltshire, England. By February of 1536, Henry was in love with Jane. Within 24 hours of the death of Anne Boleyn, wife number two, Jane had agreed to marry Henry. Jane became pregnant and gave birth to a son, Edward. Finally, Henry had what he wanted. Unfortunately, Jane did not recover from childbirth and she died two weeks after Edward was born. This was sadly very common with medicine as it was at the time. Henry was distraught, but finally he had the son that he wanted above all other things. This was a tragically short marriage and so I don't actually have any more information to give you on this. Nevertheless, but spend about five to ten minutes producing your card for wife number three, Jane Seymour. Pause the video now. Ready for wife number four? Well, let's go. Wife number four, Anne of Cleves. Born in 1515. These wives seem to be getting younger. Married, 6th of January 1540. Divorced July of 1540. That didn't take long at all. She died on the 16th of January 1557. After the death of wife Jane Seymour, Henry married a woman from an important German family. This was pretty common at the time and was usually done for political reasons to establish an alliance with another kingdom. To the right is the picture that Henry was given when he decided Anne of Cleves would become wife number four. Hans Holbein painted this, one of the finest artists of his time, but it's worth remembering that artists at this time are supposed to paint people to look as good as they possibly can be. I suppose it's a little bit like a Facebook profile picture. You wouldn't necessarily use a bad photo for that, would you? Well, this had some unintended consequences. Unfortunately, when Anne of Cleves arrived in England, Henry thought that she was rather ugly and called her the Flanders Mare, saying that she looked like a horse. Henry never loved Anne, and she wasn't very keen on him either. Who can blame her? And they agreed that the marriage was over before it had even begun. Anne declared that the marriage wasn't real, and so it was annulled and cancelled. And that was that. However, they actually remained on pretty good terms. Henry called Anne the king's sister, and gave Anne many gifts for her trouble, including £500 a year and Anne Boleyn's old home, Hever Castle, along with several other manors in England. Henry was keen not to insult Anne, even though he didn't really love her that much. And I think she was pretty happy with this deal. Pause the video now while you create your card for wife number four, Anne of Cleves. On to wife number five. Wife number five, Catherine Howard. She was born in 1521. 
Yeah, these wives are definitely getting younger. She married Henry on the 28th of July, 1540, showing that she was still really young when she married him. And she was executed on the 13th of February, 1542, the day before Valentine's Day. Nice. Catherine was from Norfolk, England, and was the cousin of Anne Boleyn, wife number two. Henry married Catherine Howard only 16 days after his marriage to Anne of Cleves was over. At this time, Henry was 42 years old and Catherine was only 19. Henry thought that she was very beautiful and said that she was a rose without a thorn. In other words, how could something so beautiful ever hurt him? He showered her with expensive gifts, but unsurprisingly, Catherine never loved her fat tyrant husband with an open wound festering on his leg. There were rumours that Catherine was being unfaithful to Henry only one year after their marriage. This was a dangerous move by Catherine, considering what Henry had done to his other wives. Henry investigated the rumours and found that she was, in fact, being faithful, unfaithful to him. True to form, Henry had Catherine Howard executed. Pause the video here and spend between 5 and 10 minutes creating your next card. One wife to go. Wife number six, Catherine Parr. Born in 1512. That's a little bit older than the last one, so that's possibly a good move. Married Henry on the 12th of July, 1543. And widowed on the 28th of January, 1547. That's when Henry died. She survived. She died on the 5th of September, 1548. Catherine Parr was born in Kendal, not far from Lancaster. Catherine was the last of Henry's wives. When Catherine married Henry, he was an old man, and she acted as his nurse as well as his wife. She had a sensitive nature and was interested in learning. Remember that Henry was interested in intelligence, and by this point it looks like he was more interested in the conversation than having any more children. Henry appreciated her care and intelligence, despite being an increasingly paranoid and tyrannical old king by this point. Catherine was widowed by Henry, and in other words Henry died before her, in 1547, and she lived for only about one year after. That meant that after Henry had died, Edward VI, the son of Henry VIII and Jane Seymour, was now King of England. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Pause the video here while you create your final card on Catherine Parr. Onwards. Let's bring it all together then. You should now have a wealth of information on all of these different wives, including an idea of which one you think might have been Henry's favourite. Well, here's one interpretation or idea as to who might have been Henry's favourite. Jane Seymour was Henry VIII's favoured wife. How far do you agree with this point of view? Explain your answer, giving examples about at least three of his wives. You can do more than this if you like. Here's how you might want to answer. You could follow this writing frame if you wish, but don't feel that you have to. First of all, make a point. One of Henry the Apes where our wives was, and then choose one from the list. Example, one reason Henry disliked or liked this wife was, and then explain that, this made him like or dislike her because, and then link it back to the question. This backs up or goes against the idea that Jane Seymour was Henry's favourite wife because. So, on that particular paragraph, if you've explained something for Jane Seymour, you're probably going to be explaining how that backs up the idea that Jane Seymour was his favourite wife. If it's one of the others, it might be going against this. Or, or if you really hated that wife, you might still be able to explain how that shows that Jane Seymour was better than that wife, or, or at least preferred by Henry. Once you've done that sort of paragraph for three of the wives, you can then conclude. Overall, I agree or disagree that Jane Seymour was Henry's favourite wife. An example that supports my point of view is, and this supports my point of view because. This sort of answer will probably take you about 15 minutes to write, maybe a little bit longer if it takes you a while to write things down, and that's fine. Because you can pause the video here while you complete this. But once you've done that, well, that's the end of the lesson. I'll say thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been enjoyable and interesting to you. And if it has, give this video a like and perhaps subscribe to the channel for more similar topics. On that note then, if you're going to attempt that answer, pause the video while you do so. If not, goodbye.